Hi, this is Dan Smith of DPS Legal Counsel, and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about the important business law doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. There is a recent case that has just come out of the Tennessee Court of Appeals. Uh, the, the name of the case is Underwood versus Miller. And I'm not going to talk about the specifics of the case that much. I want to talk about five key points that, that you can take from this case uh, and are important to know about the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. Now, what is piercing the corporate veil? Essentially, it is going behind the ownership of a corporation or an LLC to hold the owners of the corporation or the LLC legally responsible for the uh, alleged bad actions of the entity. In other words, uh, if you can find, if you get a judgment against uh, a corporation or an LLC in a lawsuit for a breach of contract or a tort, you know, a negligence, something along that line, can you hold the owners, the shareholders in the case of a corporation or the members in the case of an LLC personally liable for the wrongdoing of the entity? There are five things you need to know about piercing the corporate veil in Tennessee uh, that you can get from this Underwood versus Miller case. First, uh, the presumption is that uh, you sh the presumption is against piercing the corporate veil. In other words, you have to overcome a strong presumption that the entity itself is legally responsible for its own wrongdoings, and the members are not responsible. So the, the general rule, the default rule, the presumption is that the owners of an entity are not responsible for the wrongdoing of the entity. You have to overcome that strong presumption in order to pierce the corporate veil. That's number one. Number two, even though the doctrine is called piercing the corporate veil, it also applies in the context of an LLC. So you, you, uh, you obviously have lots of cases uh, where someone seeks to pierce the corporate veil of a corporation. But you can also have a, the situation where someone has a lawsuit against an LLC, gets a judgment, and wants to go behind that judgment and hold the members of the LLC responsible. Can they do it through piercing the corporate veil since an LLC is not a corporation? The short answer is yes. The, the same general uh, principles that apply to piercing the corporate veil for a corporation also apply to piercing the corporate veil for an LLC. That's number two. Number three uh, is that this case also sets forth, Underwood versus Miller sets forth what the general rules are for what you have to show to pierce the corporate veil. It's essentially a number of factors called the Allen factors, which comes from a, a case that had the name Allen in it uh, from Federal District Court in Tennessee uh, about um, 16 years ago. Uh, these Allen factors, there are 11, 11 Allen factors, and the court looks at these to, and, and weighs them to see if uh, piercing the corporate veil makes sense in that particular case. Now, you don't just add them up and see if you have more of them than another. They, have different, they don't have the same weight. It's basically just uh, a court would just look at the factors, determine which way they go, and then make an ultimate decision whether it's proper or fair or um, it's just for the corporate veil to be pierced. Now, there are 11 factors. I'm going to look at these and read them to you. I have to look down at my notes here to see that or the case itself to see this because I can't remember them all off the top of my head. First factor is whether there was a failure to collect paid in capital for the entity. This goes to whether the money that was supposed to be paid for the interest or the shares at the outset of the corporation or the LLC was actually paid in. Number two, whether the entity, the corporation, or the LLC was grossly undercapitalized. You go to the outset of the formation of the entity, determine whether uh, the entity had enough capital to to conduct its business. It could either be capital that was paid in by the owners or it could be loan capital where they had a line of credit or loans from a bank to operate it. You look to see whether they had sufficient capital or whether it was grossly undercapitalized and couldn't conduct its business. That's number two. Number three, whether there was the issuance or non-issuance of stock certificates. Now, in the case of an LLC, that's irrelevant because it doesn't have stock certificates. In the case of a corporation, if it doesn't issue the stock certificates that it's supposed to, that could be a factor weighing in favor of piercing the corporate veil. 
Number four, uh, whether the sole ownership of the stock is in one individual or not. And that would be the same thing with an LLC, whether it has one member or more. This in and of itself is not determinative. Uh, you can, in other words, have a one member, single member corporation, and you, uh, a single member, single shareholder corporation, one, one shareholder owning the corporation. You can likewise have a single member LLC, one member owning the LLC. That in and of itself is not determinative. In other words, the courts will look at that, and that's a factor, but standing alone, it's not enough. You'd have to look to see if there are other factors in favor of Pierce and the corporate veil. So that's actually an important point uh, to keep in mind when you're looking at Pierce and the corporate veil, is whether, uh, it, it, you just need to know that standing alone, standing on itself, a single member corporation, single member LLC, sorry, or a single shareholder corporation in and of itself does not justify Pierce and the corporate veil. You have to find other factors in, uh, in order to justify Pierce and the corporate veil. Um, the use of the same office or business location. This would be if the individual used the same office space, same location for personal matters, for their own other business other than the LLC or the corporation. So that'd be that, that would be a factor. Uh, the employment of the same employees or attorneys. So you would look to see if the person who is either the sole shareholder or the sole member or uh, are the owners and members of the, of the uh, corporation or LLC also have the same employees or same attorneys. Number seven, the use of the corporation as an instrumentality or business conduit for an individual or other corporation. So this is where you look to see if the business itself, the, the corporation or the LLC is a sham, a dummy, uh, um, it's merely there in name only, and it's just used as an instrumentality of the underlying owners of the business. Um, number eight, the diversion of corporate assets by or to a stockholder or other entity to the detriment of creditors. You look to see, in other words, if the owners of the business, the corporation or the LLC, are diverting assets to their own personal use to the detriment of other creditors of, of the business. Um, number nine, the use of the corporation as a subterfuge in illegal transactions. So if there is some allegation that the business is in, in, engaging in illegal uh, conduct or transactions and is using that um, uh, corporate structure or that LLC structure in order to further its, its illegal transactions, that is an issue to, to consider. Um, the formation, number 10, the formation and use of the corporation to transfer to it the existing liability of another person or entity. That speaks for itself. That's just another uh, factor. And finally, the failure to maintain arm's length relationships among related entities. So if you had related entities, is, are there arm's length transactions between them or are they treated essentially as one, uh, one entity? Uh, you'd want to make sure that you have rela related entities that are, are operate at arm's length or as a factor in favor of uh, Pierce and the corporate bail. Finally, in Tennessee, um, courts look to add one additional uh, factor in deciding whether to pierce the corporate veil, and that is they require, um, in addition to the Allen factors, that there be a proof of either fraud or injustice um, perpetrated by the ha fact that the, the LLC or the corporation is in place. So is, are the owners uh, of the corporation or the LLC using that to further some fraudulent purpose or intent uh, or some seeking to basically do something that is unjust. So that's an additional uh, requirement over and above the Allen factors. So what we learned from this case, essentially Underwood versus Miller, number one, it's hard to pierce the corporate veil. The presumption is against it. Number two, um, the piercing the corporate veil applies to LLCs as well as corporations. Number three, there are 11 Allen factors. That you have to, that courts have to weigh to determine if the veil of a corporation or the LLC should be pierced. Number four, in addition to the Allen factors, Tennessee courts require a proof of fraud or injustice in order to pierce the corporate veil. And fifth, uh, the last thing is that um, if you uh, if you have a single member LLC or a single shareholder corporation, that in and of itself, standing alone, is not enough to pierce the corporate veil. So what do you get, what do you glean from all this? Number one, I would say you would glean, make sure that you pay in the capital that you're supposed to pay in on the front end, that you say you're going to pay in on the front end for a corporate, uh, for corporate shares or for a membership interest in an LLC. Number two, make sure 
that you have not undercapitalized your business, that it has enough capital either through borrowing or through equity uh, payments to operate its business. Number three, make sure you uh, uh, abide by all separateness of the LLC or the corporation. You don't commingle funds between you personally and your LLC or corporation. Uh, you operate only through funds of the corporation or the LLC, not your personal funds. Uh, um, have meetings, uh, document your meetings, make sure you treat the entity not as your set, not as an instrumentality of you personally, but as a separate legal entity. And finally, if you do get a lawsuit against your company um, and you lose that lawsuit against your company and then the other party seeks to go personally against you by uh, so, uh, essentially attempting to pierce the corporate veil, don't, uh, don't freak out, don't, don't uh, give up because uh, it's, like I said, it's difficult to pierce the corporate veil. Um, having just a single member of an LLC or a single shareholder is not determinative. There have to be other factors. There are a lot of Allen factors that, uh, are, that come into play and essentially you, there has to be some proof of fraud or injustice on your part or on the part of the business in order for a court in Tennessee to pierce the corporate veil. So that's it for today. Those are five key points that you can get out of this recent case about piercing the corporate veil in Tennessee with respect to a corporation or an LLC. I hope this helps. And remember, as always, business is more exciting than any game. We'll see you next time.